Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode here at A Week in Geekdom. This time we're doing something completely different, something I've never done before on this website, on this YouTube page, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, I decided to pull up a list, you, you, wow, you cannot see that on my phone, of all the anime series that I am currently watching. This includes uh, spring 2019 series and stuff that's a little bit older but I'm catching up on and just giving you my impressions overall whether I like it I don't like it do I recommend it do I, I hate it uh, stuff like that you know I don't do much anime content as I should be doing on this channel so I'm trying to rectify that by taking a look at all the different shows that I, I am currently binging on and I am currently uh, enjoying and just doing like this one massive review uh, and, and yeah, this will be a recurring segment on this channel, hopefully monthly. So a lot of series that I might not do a separate dedicated video uh, for, uh, we can cover it and we can talk a little bit about it and what I like, what I don't like and all that stuff. So if it's a new series, you get this cool opportunity to uh, review it alongside with me. Uh, batch by batch. I, I'm not necessarily going to go uh, episode by episode, but I am going to be covering as much as I can as I finish these shows as we're watching them in real time. Right, first I'm going to start with a series that I'm currently uh, wearing in this video. Of course, that is Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. As of this video, the, we've only seen two episodes and... My gosh, like literally, uh, it has no right to be as good as it is right now because uh, coming off of the last uh, or the first half of the season where things were a little bit slower, you know, it focused more on the uh, world building aspect and enriching the lore of this uh, fantastic little series or actually phenomenon because the world loves Attack on Titan. Uh, but yeah, uh, after that slow buildup, it ended pretty strongly, and now here, it's starting with a bang, like retaking the wall and, and just this flat out fight that is going to start uh, between the uh, Titans and our uh, military force. It's, it's pretty exciting. The animation, as always, is top notch. The soundtrack and everything is just really freaking spectacular and I cannot wait Sunday after Sunday for more Attack on Titan goodness. Next up, some really questionable content on my part uh, because I wanted to see everything that's being aired right now that's completely new. Uh, the comedy perverse series Why the Hell Are You Here Teacher? I, I sincerely do not know why I watched uh, as many episodes as I've watched but um i hate using the term trash i know the community likes to say oh this is trash this is garbage it's pretty bad i just i just find it hilarious that something like this gets to air on national uh japanese television for some reason i i i don't know it's about a dude with um the hots for his teacher and a bunch of awkward not safe for work stuff happens and I just love the idea that it's censored with like huge um, chibi pictures of the teacher I, I find that uh, freaking hilarious but yeah it's not for um, minors so watch out next up probably my favorite of the whole list and that is Demon Slayer Holy crap, that thing is amazing. Beautifully animated. The story is really interesting. Basically, you know, instead of vampire slaying, we're getting uh, Oni or demon slaying uh, with the character trying to uh, find out what exactly, what exactly happened with his sister and try and revert her back to her human state. I don't, I don't know where the manga's at, but uh, as for the anime, it's really awesome. I love the animation and the characters are all really fascinating, really cool. And, uh, you know, just uh, a, a really remarkable job. A lot of people were kind of lukewarm on the manga, but so far the anime has been universally loved by a lot of, of people. 
Next up is the remake of Fruits Basket. I watched Fruits, ba uh, Fruits Basket Fruits, when it first aired way, 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 way back so many years ago. And this time around, it looks better. It follows the manga closely. And it's just a wholesome delight. I cannot recommend it enough. I, I love Fruits Basket. Next up, a really long title that I do not know how to pronounce, but I will try. And it is, uh, I don't know the English name for it, sorry. Uh, Hitoro Hitori Bochi no Marumaru Seikats. I think I said that right. I think I butchered it. Whatever, you decide. But basically, the story of this socially awkward. Uh, teen going to school and having to befriend people because she doesn't know anybody her friend uh, told her to you know they made a promise that she would befriend as many people as possible in her new classroom and it leads to some hilarious content it is heartwarming it is funny and it's just uh, our characters are klutz and they are bizarre and wonderfully human and it is such a treat to uh, get to watch a show that it's it's comedy but it doesn't go overboard it's sweet it's a little bit of everything i, I wholeheartedly uh, recommend it if you want to have a good laugh for a couple minutes next up midnight occult civil servants the name is terrible it's uh, forgetful i think but for the most part it's kind of interesting in a nutshell it's it's in japan and it's sort of <clears throat> men in black but with fairy tales and uh folklore if that makes any sense isekai quartet all right in in comic books we have epic crossovers between x-men and avengers and over at dc with uh, justice league and all these other wonderful characters this is the anime equivalent of that it's comedy based, it's chibi, I get it, but just the idea that you can take four different franchises that are, you know, they revolve around the same thing, isekai, and just unite them for a spectacular chibi treat is really awesome. Uh, Konosuba being one of my favorite comedy series, uh, Tanya is really great as well, same with uh, Ray, uh, Ray Zero and uh, friggin uh, Overlord. They're all wonderful series in their own right, but just seeing everybody together is quite hilarious and quite awesome at the same time. I wish it were longer, but yeah, you know, four episodes in, it's actually pretty sweet. Helpful Fox Senko-san. Um, I didn't think I was gonna like it simply because of the poster and the premise and all that stuff, but I found myself really intrigued by it. It's really wonderful. And if I could use a word to describe it without freaking people out, it would be wholesome. It is a very wholesome anime based around a very silly premise of this 800-year-old fox deity wanting to eliminate uh, the... I, I forgot the name of what they call it, but sort of like this personification of um, stress and evil and just all the wrongdoings that... Uh, all that um, evil muck that we attract when we're feeling down or when we're stressed or tired and all that stuff. So our main character, he is a young adult. And I do honestly want to believe, aside from internet weep culture, that the series is sending out a positive message for uh, young adults and teenagers specifically to learn to relax and not uh, overwork and overtire and just try to live a happier, healthier, uh, loving life. I want to believe that's the message and the intent behind this, but knowing the internet like I do for so many years, I, I'm, I'm afraid to Google um, uh, Fox Senko-san on the internet out of fear of uh, weird um, images. <laughs> but so far of what I've seen, it's pretty wholesome. Hopefully it stays that way. Uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, it, it started in 2018, December 2018, whatever. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. I love the idea that, well, yeah, some of the characters are a little bit contrived and silly and basic. Um, for the most part, it innovates with uh, our main character and his negative outlook on certain things all the crap that's been thrown at his life and how he reacts to that in a somewhat realistic way like if you were in that world a lot of people would have somewhat similar uh, reactions i'm not a huge fan of certain plot elements 
especially with the uh, freaking uh, birds and stuff. But uh, as of what I've seen, uh, I think 15 episodes or something that's aired, or 16, it's it's fun and interesting and dramatic and uh, Naofumi and, 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 and Raftalia and all these other characters are really... Uh, wonderful and I love that people uh, really like them and the series is a hit. We never learn. I never learn. I thought it was gonna be uh, something funnier but it, it's sort of this... Uh, I'm tired of uh, tropes and harems and all that stuff. I'm not a huge fan of that and I watched a couple episodes but with each one my interest dwindles because it's kind of more of the same. Hopefully you guys have read the manga and can tell me a little bit more about it, but for the most part, I really don't care that much about it. I, I tend to watch it just to round things out, out of all the series that I'm currently checking out. Don't hate me for that. Sarasanmai, easily. The most interesting title out of everything I've read so far. It is a wonderful, queer-tastic show that took everybody by surprise. Uh, I am I am open to whatever plot is out there. I don't mind and a lot of people for some reason <laughs> want to be jerks and make fun of the show and bash it for all the wrong reasons. But for me, it's a it's very interesting. I love that you can do like this representation of different views, religions and ca religions and characters. And this anime is <laughs> it's really freaking bizarre. I'm stumbling with my words. It's literally about Kappa demons and butt stuff that they get and wish fulfillment and characters finding out about their true selves it's so weird but it's sort of a guilty pleasure i guess i don't know next up my favorite out of everything that i'm watching so far as of this video and it is uh dororo it is breathtaking and it's awesome and it's just a wonderful beautiful amazing epic adaptation of a Tezuka classic. If you've read the classic manga, you know what we're talking about. Or if you've seen the classic anime, now we can see it with modern techniques and modern drawings and, and you know, a better score and wonderful written characters and just, it's really something else, really epic. And, and, and I love that it sort of deviates from the norm and gives us a more uh, mature, feudal era uh, action thriller. Uh, I, I cannot recommend it enough. And uh, three older series, well, they're not technically that old, but I am uh, watching them regardless. One is Late Back Camp, and it is extremely wholesome and, and refreshing and beautiful, funny, and just charming every single frame and the comedy on that thing is on point the animation is beautiful i love how they use social media and then texting and then photos and all that stuff the camping element is really awesome just seeing them go through the little trinkets and setting up the base camps and all that stuff really really great stuff uh gabriel dropout i was recommended uh, somebody recommended this to me i forgot uh who it's it's okay. It's actually really funny. I like the humor in it, the line deliveries, and just the concept is a little bit, eh, whatever. But it's the comedy aspect that I really enjoy. The jokes are uh, cleverly written sometimes, or at least that's my impression, I think. And finally, uh, to get that shonen jump kick, uh, Black Clover. Uh, my friend Adonis, and he's a big into Black Clover and recommended it to me, so I am checking it out, uh, the anime at least. And Asta, he's like, um, he's like the character of Naruto on Red Bulls, <laughs> yelling constantly through a fan, and I guess I grew accustomed to it, but it is jarring to say the least. But I like the idea of this sort of magical world, uh, literally magic. Uh, with sort of militaristic aspects that reminded me of like the Soul Society, for example. I thought that was uh, pretty clever. A lot of people make the assumption like, oh, it's Naruto book with magic. Uh, they're quite different. They're a little different. It, uh, they share some traits, but then again, 
all Shonen Jump protagonists share similar traits. So yeah, guys, that's uh, what I'm currently watching. On our next episode, I will include other series that I, I completely forgot or haven't started. Uh, those will be included on our next uh, installment. If you like this and you want to see more type of uh, anime content like this, let me know down below. And let me know... Calm down, phone. Also, let me know what you're watching and what you think of the shows that I'm watching. And sort of, you know, we're keeping the conversation going. As always, guys, thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing to A Week in Geek Them. You can follow me on your favorite social media platform. And, uh, yeah, I have, I've, I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.